Now, before we uh, start the book, I would like you to, I, I'd like to give you a brief uh, uh, explanation of the Quranic orthography. That is the spelling and the signs and symbols that are mentioned in the, that are used in the Quranic text because most of the people don't know this. The Quran has got its own orthography, its own spelling, and its own signs and symbols which are not used in normal Arabic writing. So I'll start with that because we are going to read the texts. And in the text, you, you, you'll come across uh, these uh, signs and symbols and uh, uh, spellings which are not usually used in the normal Arabic uh, writing. So to be conversant with these uh, peculiarities, I'll give you an uh, explanation of these things. Quranic orthography. Now the Quranic text that we use, if we take a page of the Quran, any page, it contains four elements. It contains four different elements. They have been, of course, synchronized now, but they are four different elements. The first element is the consonantal text of the Quran. Now, this is the consonantal text of the Quran without vowels, only consonants. Of course, long vowels are incorporated, like waw, alif, ya. These are incorporated. These are called huruf uh, al-illa, they are huruf. But the short vowels, fatha, wama, kasra, and all these, these are not there. Not even the dots. Now this is the beginning, is the, the beginning of Surat uh, Al-An'am. The first two words are not here, probably in the first page, in the previous page. Uh, Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaq as-samawati. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaq as-samawati. No dots here. Wal arda wa ja'ala. See this is jim ayn lam ja'ala al dhulumati wa nur Thumma al-lazina thumma al-lazina kafaru Kafara, wow, this is Alif. Kafaru bi rabbihim, bi rabbihim ya'dilun. This is Noon. Huwa al-lazhi, huwa al-lazhi khalakakum min teen. Thumma qadha ajalan. So Alif is here and Jim is here, next, next to the rest of the word. ثُمَّ قَضَىٰ أَجَلًا وَأَجَلٌ مُسَمَّنْ عِنْدَهُ Dal here and Ha here, عِنْدَهُ ثُمَّ أَنْتُمْ تَمْتَرُونَ تَمْتَرُونَ وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ Ta here وَفِي الْأَرْضِ Bad here. Ya'lamu, this is Ya'lamu, Sirrakum, Wajaharakum. Now this is the consonantal text which was prepared by, or under the supervision of Uthman radiallahu anhu. And that is why it is called the Uthmanic text, or Uthmanic codex. Al-Rasm al-Uthmani. Al-Rasm al-Uthmani. Please be clear that Ar-Rasmul Uthmani does not mean a style of writing. It means the text as was prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu. Not by him, but by his uh, uh, calligraphists under his supervision. So the first element, when we say such and such text confirms to Ar-Rasmul Uthmani, what does it mean? It means that the spelling of the words confirm to the Ar-Rasmul Uthmani by the text, uh, confirms to the text prepared by Uthman. For example, 
السماوات has no alif. So if you write السماوات واو and then alif, complete alif, it does not conform to the Uthmanic text. But if you write without the alif or a short alif after waw, then it conforms to the Quranic, uh, Uthmanic text. So the first element in the Quranic text is uh, Rasm al-Uthmani, which is the consonantal text prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu. The second element is the dots, which were added later on. For example, Khalaqa, Kha has no dot. Kha has no dot. Qaf has no dot. Samawat Ta has no dot. Now in those days, the Arabs knew the Quran, the Muslims knew the Quran by heart. It was only a support. But most of the people, most of the Sahabas knew the Quran by heart. So they, 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 they can easily read the text. So the dots were added later on when the uh, when, when uh, non-Arabs entered into Islam and uh, they could not read this text, dots were added. That is the second, it's called Al-I'jam. I'll write this. The first is Arras Al Uthmani Al Ras Al Uthmani. The second is Al Al Ijam. Al-I'jam is a masdar from which uh, conjugation, which form? Yes, from the fourth form, A'jama, Yu'jimu, I'jamun. I'jam is putting the dots. That is why a dotted letter is called Harfun Mu'jam. It is a Ismul Muf'ul. Harf Mu'jam. Harf Mu'jam is a dotted letter, like, like Jim and Kha. But Ha, for example, is Ghair Mu'jam. Harf Ghair Mu'jam, undotted letter. Dal is Ghair Mu'jam. Dal is Mu'jam. Ra is Ghair Mu'jam. Zai is Mu'jam. Sin Ghair Mu'jam. Sheen Mu'jam. So Al-I'jam is the process of adding the dots to the letters. The third element is a what a dot means the vowel points. Like fatha, dhamma, kasra, madda, shadda, all these are included in a dot. In the Indian subcontinent, they use the word al arab Arab, that is not correct. <clears throat> but Arab, you must have learned in, Arab, in the Arabic grammar, is to, to find out the, the correct ending of a noun or a verb in the sentence. For example, عندي كتاب is marfur. قرأت كتابا read a book. It's mansoob. وجدت هذا في كتاب I found this in a book. It's majroor. Now this is Arab. The changing of the endings of a noun or a verb, mudari, to show its function in the sentence, that is Arab, which in European uh, uh, 
language is called declension, declension of a noun. <clears throat> there is an Arab, but calling the, uh, the vowel marks, vowel points as Arab is, is, is not very correct. So it is called adopt. Adopt. <clears throat> These are the uh, three points. The, the uh, uh, consonantal text prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu, which does not have either dots or the vowel points. Later on, vowel points were uh, dots were added. Later on, vowel points were also added. In the beginning, vowel points were not uh, like the one we have, lines, but there were dots also. Dots in front, dots below, and dot above. That is why, if you remember in Urdu, the fatha is called zabar. Zabar means above. Zair, zair means below. Pesh means in front. So they, these were, these indicate the positions of these points in the writing. They were dots, but in a different color, different ink. Red dots, above is fatha, below is kasra, and in front of it was Vamma. But later on developments <coughs> uh, were made and we have different forms. In Ajam, there are very little difference uh, in different countries. There is only one difference which I would like to mention. In Morocco, Qaf is one dot above. One dot above is Qaf. One dot below is Fa. So if they want to write Tif, which means a stop, road sign, they write like this. If you go to Morocco, be careful. <laughs> you may go right into the arms of a policeman. Moroccans read Qira'a, uh, which is called Warsh. Warsh. So they write also in this writing Qaf uh, one dot above and Fa one dot below. And we in the uh, Quran complex, King Fat Quran complex, we have published Quran according to Warsh also. So we get a lot of letters from different parts of the world saying, you don't know how to read the, write the Qur'an. <laughs> you write one dot for Qaf. <clears throat> so we have to explain to them that this is how the Moroccans write. With regard to adopt, there are different styles of adopt. In, in the Indian subcontinent, there is one adopt, which is not very different, but it's different from the, take, the from the DOPT system that is used in Arab countries. Turks, they have a different type of DOPT. And Warsh in Morocco, it has completely different uh, kind of DOPT. It's all systems, different system, but it doesn't, doesn't change anything. The fourth element, Alamat al Alamatul Waqf means punctuation marks. <laughs> These are also different countries have different systems. India and Pakistan, they have got a different system. In Arab countries, they have got a different system. And these are of recent origin, maybe about 200 years old, 250 years old, not very old. Just to guide the reader where to stop, where not to stop. But in the Indian subcontinent, they have got so many signs that one get, gets confused. There are a lot of signs and some of the signs are contradictory. One sign says you stop, the other sign says don't stop. <laughs> In the 
King Fahd Quran complex uh, Quran, we have got only five, three or, uh, five or six. I'll explain to you later on when we come to that. Alamatul Waqf. So these are the uh, four elements uh, that, can, that are contained in the Quranic text. So the, the very important thing is that it should confirm to the Ar-Rasm al-Uthman. Now ulama have permitted a single line or one or two lines if you are writing an article and you want to quote the Quran, if you write a line, one or two lines, ayat, you can use, you can write these ayat in the ordinary, normal Arabic script. One or two lines. It's allowed. But not the whole of the Quran or whole of the surah. It should confirm to the Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani because here there are Volumes have been written about where Alif has been added, well, where Alif has been omitted, where Wow has been omitted, where Wow has been written. So there's a whole lot of works, books written. So we can be very sure, even if we don't find here, we can be very sure that this little word was actually like this. There's a Wow there, there's no Alif there. So it has been well guarded and you can go to the books and find out the real word, <coughs> real uh, status of the word. <coughs> that is why ulama do not allow that the whole Quran be written in the modern script. Because more modern spelling it differs from place to place. In Egypt there is a system, in Syria there is another system. In Egypt for example, Mi'atun, 100. Egypt, Egyptians and most of the Arab countries, they write with an alif. You must have seen this. Mi'atun. But in Syria, they write like this, without alif. In Egyptian, Egyptian Arabic, ya is written without dots. In Syrian, with dots. If you, if a Syrian sees a word like kursi, for example, return with a dot, you will get very confused and take a pen. Even if it is in a book, you will put two dots. But Egyptians don't write. Without, they write without dots. So there's a lot of difference between different countries, Arab countries, with regard to writing. So if, we, if you begin to write the Qur'an according to the normal Arabic script or normal Arabic orthography, then there will be confusion. That is why it is best to stick to the, the ancient text as all uh, works of legacy. Now next we come to the signs and symbols that are used in the Qur'an, <coughs> Quranic text which are different from the orthography used in normal Arabic script. Of course, I'll give you some of the examples, but uh, it'll take a lot of time to speak to you about all these signs. The first sign, or the first uh, difference, you see, ah, Hamza plus Alif, we write like this in more normal script, for example, Adam, we write like this. Amana, we write like this. But in the Quranic script, it's Hamza plus Alif. Ah, because A ah means Hamza plus Alif. Just like Ba is Ba plus Alif, Ta is Ta plus Alif. So Hamza plus Alif is Ah. So we write like this in the Quranic script, not like this. Now, if it's Lam Alif, if the Hamza is placed on top of the Alif, it is Hamza followed by Fatha, it is Ah. For example, Al-Amnu. But please note, if it is placed between the two lines here, 
It is Hamza plus Fatha plus Alif. Ah. Oh. Did you get that? Yes. Because it is as if it is uh, Alif, it's like this. Alif plus uh, f f Hamza plus Alif. This is Hamza plus Alif. But if it's placed here, it is only Hamza followed by Fatha. This is Hamza, Fatha plus Alif. Akhiratu. This information you will not find any, even in, 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 the, in the pages they have written about this, they have not written this. So this is Al Akhiratu. Azif, azifatil azifatu. So it will be written, the Hamza will be here between the two lines, not on top of the. Right. Now, sukun in the Mus'haf is like this, which is actually the head of jim, jazm. Jazm means cutting, that is removing the bubble. Ajrun, for example. So, this is. Head of Jim, which has been, of course, later on simplified to this. In normal Arabic, this is the sukun. But this in Arab, in the Quranic script, a small circle, means a letter which is not pronounced. Please remember this. Like Amanu, this alif is not pronounced. Ula'ika. The wow is not pronounced. Ulul arham. Ulul albab. The wow is not pronounced. So ulu will be written like this. Ulu. Ula'ika also. The wow will have. Now there is another version of this circle is elongated. This is complete circle, this is elongated. This is usually placed on the word ana, but there are also a few more words. This means that the alif is not pronounced in continuous reading, but it is to be pronounced in the pausal form. When you pause, ana, you read the alif, pronounce the alif. But ana muhammadun, ana talibun, then you don't pronounce the alif, you, as if it is a hamza plus noon fatha, ana, not ana. So it has two, two pronunciations, one in pausal form, where Alif is pronounced, Ana. Manja'a, who came? Ana. With the Alif pronounced, Ana. But Ana ji'itu. Here you don't pronounce. So, this elongated uh, uh, circle is placed on, on this word, and there are other words also. Now, if you have like this, noon without a sukun, the next letter has a shadda. Noon has no sukun, and the following first letter has a shadda, that means noon is assimilated in the next word, the following letter. So you pronounce, you don't pronounce min rabbika, you say mir rabbika. Mil ladun, min ladun, mil ladun. Noon has no sukun, no, 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 no sukun, and the first letter following it has a shadda. The next. Noon has no sukoon, but the first, the following letter has no shadda. Here it is partial assimilation. This is complete assimilation, mir rabbika. Noon completely is lost. It becomes ra, 
if it is followed with lam, it becomes lam mil ladunka. But if there is no shadda, noon has no sukoon, but the following letter has no shadda, it means it is partial assimilation. Idham naqis. How do you pronounce it? You say, main yaqul. The noon, nasality of the noon is there. Main yaqul. Mewal. Mewal. Uh, it's not my yaqul, mewal, no. With na, the nasal quality of the noon is retained and there is idram, idram, which is naqis, which is incomplete idram. Now, as you know, tanween is actually noon sakina. If you say kitabun, you should have written ba. Dhamma, noon, sakin. But we don't write like this. We double the Dhamma. Kitabun. Kitaban. Kitabin. So the Tanwin is actually, what is it? It is noon, sakin. So, what applies to noon, sakin here also applies to Tanwin. How to differentiate between the tanween? If there is idram or not? You follow me? Here, the fatha, second fatha is placed right on top of the first fatha. Here, the kasara, second kasara is placed right below the first kasara. Vamma also, this is simplified. Vamma also, two dhammas placed one above the other. This is called a tarkib. A tarkib means one being placed above the other. Now, this signifies ilhar. Likulli min had. There is no idham or ikhfa. Likulli min had. min. You pronounce the noon and it's Point of articulation, likulli min had. This is called tatabu. That is one fatha following the other fatha. Not being on top of it, but coming after it. Also kasra. Also dhamma. This means this idram. If it is, next letter has got a shadda, it means idram kamil. And if it has no shadda, then it's idram naqis. There is also what is called al-ikhfa. Have you heard of it? Al-ikhfa. Al-ikhfa means pronouncing the noon, not from the point of articulation of noon, which is behind the upper teeth, but from the point of articulation of the next letter. You have it in English also. I N you say in. The N is pronounced from behind the teeth. Reach, say in. What do you say? Ink. Do you pronounce the N from the from behind the teeth? From the calf, the from the K, from the point of articulation of K. You say ink. That is the ikhfa. In the Quran, in Arabic, you say, Anqadha, he saved. An... Noon will not have sukoon because it is ikhfa. Say, Anqadha. With K also, with Kaf, Ankalan, Inna Ladaina Ankalan. This is called Al Ikhfa. Ikhfa means hiding, hiding the noon, the pronunciation of the noon, not from its uh, point of articulation, for, but from the point of articulation of the following letter. In British English, 
M, when M comes before F, you say comfort, come, you don't say come. Comfort. In Arabic also you say Anf. Nose? You say Anf. This is Ikhfa. Anf. So these are two examples. And later on in the Tajweed class, of course, you will learn this. Uh, uh, Ikhfa and Idgham, they are indicated by this uh, device. The noon has no sh sukoon, and the following letter, if it has shadda, that means it's complete uh, idgham. If it has no shadda, it is partial idgham, or it is ikhfa. With regard to hamza, I must, uh, I must have told you before that in the ancient Arabic script, This was Hamza. This was Hamza. So if, they, if you write like this, it should be pronounced, how should it be pronounced? Ma. Ma. Hamza. Which means the closure of the glottis. You know, there are vocal cords, vocal cords. If they come together, together the glottis is closed, then Hamza is pronounced. But, but later on, when writing developed, we had wow for long vowel, Ulu. We had ya for long uh, kasra, long kasra, fi, hu, li. For long fatha, what to do? They employed the hamza. They employed the hamza to indicate what? To indicate the lengthening of fatha. We want to say ma, mim fatha. We want to say ma, Mim plus Alif. Okay, but we have already seen that Mim plus Alif is Ma. How to differentiate? So they, what they did, that what they did was this Ain. They cut off the head of the Ain and put it on top of the Alif. So if you write the Hamza, uh, the top, of the, the head of the Ayn, it is Hamza. If you don't write, then it is Alif. Alif means what? Lengthening of the Fatha. So to differentiate between the original function of, fatha, uh, of Alif, the secondary function of Alif, they had to differentiate. So the Hamza, the Ayn, the head of the Ayn was placed on the Alif, to indicate Hamza, and without the head of the Ayn, it was Alif. Alif means lengthening of the Fatha. So Ma was Mim Alif, and Ma was Mim Alif with the head of the Ayn. If the Hamza is at the beginning of a word, it is either placed on top of Alif or below the Alif. When top of the Alif, if the Hamza has Fatha or Dhamma. For example, Abun. The Hamza is on top of the Alif. Ummun, also on top of the Alif. But Ibratun, Needle. Ibrahim, which we place below the alif. This is a normal Arabic script. Alif has, the Hamza has two positions, on top of the alif or below the alif. 
Only the first Hamza. But in the Mus'haf, Quranic orthography, Hamza, wherever comes, if it has Kasra, it will come below the, yeah, uh, below the, either below the Alif, or below the Ya, or below the Waw. So, we say, Ula'ika, Waw will have this circle, Alif, Hamza will be written below the Ya. And even if Hamza comes with the Alif, at the end of the word, it will be written below the Alif. So this is the speciality of the Quranic orthography. And also, Lu'i. Wow. Hamza comes below the Wow because it is, it, it is, it is at Kasra. Yes. So that is one of the speciality, but not in the normal Quran, uh, normal Arabic uh, script, we will write Hamza on top of the Alif, only at the beginning, below the Alif, only at the beginning of a word, not, the, not at the middle. Malaika, for example, Malaika will write the Hamza on top of the Ya, not below the Ya. Now there is, uh, I told you about this. Madda, this is called Madda. Madda means stretching. Madda yamuddu, to stretch. And Madda tun is the, the, the sign of stretching. The, now in the Quranic uh, Arabic, there is an extra lengthening of the vowels. Long vowels. Long vowels are what? Fatha, uh, Alif, Waw, Ya. Yeah. Kitabun. Alif. Fi is ya. And qu, anfusakum qu is waw. And long vowels are equal to two short vowels. So kitabun, ma for example, meme has got ma, one, one, one fatha, ma, it equals to the, the length of period as two fathas. The same way, fi, fi, two kasras, fu, two vammas. But in the Quran, Quranic Arabic, there are certain situations where these fatha, uh, alif, waw, and ya receive extra lengthening. And this extra lengthening is shown by this sign. Okay, when does the, when do the long vowels receive extra lengthening? Two things. Number one, when they are followed by a Hamza. When they are followed by a Hamza. For example, ma'un. In normal Arabic we say ma'un. But in the Quranic Arabic, we say ma'un. Either four vowels or six vowels. Ma'un. Ja'a. And that is to bring out the Hamza. Otherwise, the Hamza will get lost. Ma'un. Hamza is a very, uh, very difficult sound to be pronounced. So it has to be brought out, pronounced or, uh, clearly, so the vowel is lengthened. Ma'un, ja'a, waw, su'un, ya, ji'a. So this vowel, the madda in, in Quranic orthography, signifies extra lengthening. It does not signify Habza plus Alif.
Ja, su, un, ji, a. If you hear the Imam saying, fa, lengthening. What do you expect? Is it fa, isun, or fa, sikun? It must be fa, isun, because hamza. It can't be fa, sikun. Fasikun without lengthening, Fasikun, but Faizun. This is the first thing. Second, when the Alif Wawia are followed by a Sakin letter. Dabbatun. There are two bees, two bars. The first has what? Sukun. Dabbatun. Waladhalin. There are two lambs. First lamb is second, the second lamb has kasra. There are certain letters of Arabic whose name Ends in sukun. Like this letter, noon. Noon, wa, noon. What is the last letter? Noon. Sakin or mutharrik? Sakin. So it also has letting noon in the Quran. Qaf. Qaf. Ha. Ha, has, ha does not end in sukun. Ha. Like in kaf, ha. Ya. No sukun. Ain. There is sukun. Saad. There is sukun. So extra lengthening. The letter, uh, the alif wa ya receive extra lengthening if they are followed by what? Hamza or Sakin letter. Or Sukun. So the sign of lengthening, extra lengthening is this one. Please don't confuse this with normal Arabic Madda, like Adam. We don't, we write Adam like this. But ma'un, dabbatun, dabbatun should also have the madda. Here one more point. If the alif wawiya are in one word and the hamza is another word, then you have got a choice, either to lengthen or not to lengthen. For example, ma in, ma alif, in hamza. Mm -hmm. You have got a choice either to lengthen it or not to lengthen it. In Indian Mus'haf, Indian Pakistani, there are two types of madda. A so very heavy madda like this is for the, the one which you have to pronounce and a light madda like this for the one which is where you have the choice. But in the Middle East and Mus'haf, uh, there's only one type of madda and then <clears throat> the differentiation you have to be learned by the uh, reader. I think these are some of the very important points that you must learn. Suffice with this and go back and, and go to the Alamatul Waqf, the punctuation marks. <clears throat> the punctuation marks which are called Alamatul Waqf
One, two, three, four, five. These are the five signs that are used in the Medina Mus'haf. Very simple and easy to understand. Meme stands for Waqf Lazim. Waqf Lazim. That's compulsory pause. Lazim. If you don't stop there, don't make a pause, the meaning may change. I'll give an example. The ayah, إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Then comes, وَالْمَوْتَى يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Only those who hear, respond. إِنَّمَا يَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ يَسْمَعُونَ Only those respond who hear. وَالْمَوْتَى يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهِ and the dead, Allah will raise them up. If you don't stop here, that means those who hear and the dead respond. So the meaning changes. So there are a few places where you will find meme, which means flazim, you have to make a stop. It is compulsory, mandatory. Jim means waqf jaiz. Jaiz, it's permissible to stop. Either you pause or you don't pause. It doesn't make much difference. This is a short for Al-Waqfu Awla. Al-Waqfu Awla. Al-Waqfu Awla. What does it mean? It's better to pause. Awla is better. Al-Waqf means pause. Al-Waqfu Awla. It is better to pause. That means it is not wrong to continue. It's better to pause. The meaning will be clearer if you pause there. The second one means is a short for Al- Al-Waslu Awla. Al-Wasl, continuation. Al-Wasl awla, continuation is better. It's to continue is better, but if you don't continue, if you pause, make a pause there, it's not going to change the meaning. Al-Waqful Jaiz, I have explained to you. And then these three dots written twice, they are called Al Mu'anaqa. Al Mu'anaqatu. It literally means embracing from Unuq. What does unuq mean? Neck. Unuq anaqa means he held him by, by the neck. Put his neck into the into his, into his neck. Mu'anaqa. You will find them in two places, very close to each other. That means if you make a pause at the first sign, don't make a pause at the second sign. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. ذلك الكتاب. That's the book. لا ريب فيه. There's no doubt in it. 
or you say zalikal kitabu la raiba fi you don't start with the first one you start with the second one so <clears throat> these are the uh, most important things that i wanted to explain to you in the text of the quran